Hello, Kevin Inoue here uh, from Fight Designer LLC, recently returned from the Patty Crane International Stage Combat Workshop in Banff, Canada, which was, as usual, a blast. Great mix of historical swordplay, uh, cutting-edge stage combat, some of the greats from throughout history. This was our 25th anniversary, um, and some firearm stuff. Um, checking in on the channel, there's, there's been an ongoing discussion about these Rite models, uh, which I did a review of in the Fight Master last fall. One of the questions which has been... Um, <clears throat> answered kind of both ways, and not conclusively to my satisfaction yet, was whether or not they will function without this orange uh, muzzle attachment. Now, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the front venting versions, this is kind of what the ATF has agreed to let people import front vent models with. This is our, our new marking, because you can't just put the old plastic plug in the barrel for a front vent model. So they end up putting this on. Uh, with the retain ones, they thread it on the inside, so they're at least somewhat functional. You can still attach a fake suppressor or those little flare adapters, things like that. Um, but it's still, for those of us who use it for prop stuff, uh, mark, marks it very clearly as a theatrical or film um, replica, as a non-gun, which is not what we want when we're using it in the movies. So we have a few options. Assuming you get your waiver from the Commerce Department, you can either paint them over, uh, I've always wondered about trying to thread the outside with, uh, you know, 14 millimeter counterclockwise so that it looks like a, a real threaded barrel from a firearm. Um, or grind them down, cut them off, take them off, whatever. But the question with these retail models was, will it still cycle without this? Because if you look at the inside of this, there is actually a restrictor built into this orange thing. Now, restrictor, for those of you who don't know, um, limits the flow of gas. So it builds up a little bit more pressure behind it, and that will allow it to cycle with blanks. So the question is... Is that the only restrictor, or is there in one inside the barrel as well that'll let it cycle still without that? Because often these are an aftermarket thing. But this is a recent enough thing, these Rite models, uh, that they may have actually been built with this in mind. So to test that theory, I've got a Rite Baron HK here. This is their SIG copy. Um, and I did, indeed, take this off. Now, they are usually wedged on pretty well, um, but it is ultimately threaded. You can take it off. Um, <clears throat> that means you can still attach these, whatever. These, incidentally, do also have a little restrictor built in. But if you look at the barrel now, um, and I don't have a light with me right now handy, I don't think, um, so I can't really show you very well, but there's there's a couple little uh, dividers built into the barrel, which is what they used to do for all the, the old uh, model gun, cap guns, and things like that, just to make sure that it was clear this was not a real gun. But there's not a restrictor built in. Um, so when I tested this with, with, uh, with blanks, it would not cycle without this. Uh, the slide would only move a tiny little bit, uh, and then it would go forward again, so it would not eject the spent casing. It would not chamber a new round. It could not function properly as the semi-automatic it's meant to be um, without something in the front. <clears throat> now again, you could, you could put this back in, or you could probably use one of these. Um, this will just mark it to look even more like a blank gun, in my opinion. So really, for those of us working with these in film, uh, and to some degree in theater, your options are, once you get that waiver from the Commerce Department, um, sand it down and paint it. Um, you could conceivably grind this down. It's the restrictor really only goes to about there. So you could you could grind off the first, I don't know, quarter inch, uh, maybe half inch if you were really careful with an angle grinder or something like that. Um, would make it almost flush with the slide, not quite. It'd still stick out a tiny bit, but you need to leave at least enough that it's got a solid plug with that restrictor in it. Uh, that's going to limit those gases and allow it to cycle uh, like it's designed to do. Otherwise, it might as well be a non-firing prop, because it'll just fire once and it won't look right when it does. So, uh, I hope that answers your question, those of you who've been wondering about these retail models and whether or not you can remove these. Answer is, not really, at least not in their entirety. <clears throat> so, until next time, uh, I'm Kevin Inoue from Fight Designer LLC. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or something you want to know about props, stage combat, any of that, uh, leave a comment, and you can always send me an email as well. Thank you very much. Bye.